Oh, this shirt. I'm gonna have to get used to this and I'm gonna have to not touch my pasties. <laughs> this is a video that I have been wanting to do for a while. I made a version of this video like two and a half years ago. Bugs knows she wasn't there actually. <gasps> Hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetheart. Are you gay? <laughs> That's a question that I know so many of you have. It's a question I sure had until I figured out my own answer, which is yes. Major big time yes. <laughs> but ever since I realized this about myself and came out, I get so many questions, so many DMs, so many comments, so many messages asking me how I knew. Elena, I think I'm a lesbian. I think I'm attracted to women, but I don't know. How can you tell? How can you know for sure? How can I know for sure? Tell me the answers. Am I a homosexual? <laughs> and while I don't have all of the answers for you, there is a document that sure can help. Hi, my name is Elena Joy. I make videos mostly about the queer community here on this channel, dating, sex, relationships, but sometimes, I talk about compulsory heterosexuality. Comp het, as we like to call it here in the community. So there is a document. It's called the Am I a Lesbian Master Doc that's been put together to hopefully help you think about your sexuality. Nothing is gonna give you hard or fast answers other than yourself, but oh boy, the things in this master doc sure are a great place to start. But before we get into the rest of the video, I would like to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's content, Love Honey. Love Honey is the world's largest online adult toy company. They have all the latest toys, they have all the best toys, the most high quality toys. And I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but they have a 100 day money back guarantee. 100 days. And one of their top brands, one of their best brands, one of their most well-known brands is Womanizer. The Womanizer brand is famous for the type of stimulation, the type of sensation that they focus on. They use gentle air pulses to massage and to create a sort of suction sensation rather than just vibration. Up until now, the Womanizer products have focused on external stimulation. So using that air pleasure technology, using that suction sensation on I might have to bleep that to please daddy YouTube, unfortunately, but we can talk more in the comments if you have questions. But today, after three years of research and development, I bring you the Womanizer OG. So this toy is for internal stimulation, focusing on the G-spot, baby. So it uses that same air pulsation technology to create that kind of massaging sensation along with vibrations internally. This is, Game changing. <laughs> if the Womanizer OG sounds like something that you'd be interested in or you want to check out Love Honey at all, you can check out the link in my description and use my code ALENA20 for 20% off site-wide. Their Black Friday sales are also getting started and they have discounts up to 60% off. So click that link in my description and check out the Womanizer OG for yourself. Let's start at the beginning, shall we? So what is compulsory heterosexuality? Compulsory is the opposite of optional. Compulsory heterosexuality is exactly what it sounds like. Being straight is something our culture tries to force on us. Compulsory heterosexuality is what forces lesbians to struggle through learning the difference between what you've been taught you want, being with men, and what you do want, being with women, which is why so many lesbians have dated men at some point. Essentially, Comp het is the idea that being straight, being a woman attracted to men is the default. And this means that we're not taught to sit down and question our attraction to men in the same way that we're taught to sit down and question any other form of attraction we might have. In my own life, this played out <laughs> so strongly. It took me until I was 28 the ripe old age of 28 to figure out that I was gay because I never questioned my attraction to men. I never questioned, is being with a man something that I want, something that fulfills me? Is this a type of relationship that sparks 
joy, attraction, romance, butterflies, like all of these different feelings, it never occurred to me to even question that attraction. That's the thing that's so wild to me. It did not occur to me that there was a world in which I didn't have to be attracted to men, which I didn't have to date men. And that is compulsory heterosexuality. The fact that I grew up in a world where being a gay woman wasn't even given to me as an option. I didn't see it. And so I didn't imagine it for myself. Well, I did, but I thought, but I always thought I was just being like silly, goofy, funny, having little silly, goofy, funny fantasies. So the big question is, how do you know? Right? How do you know if you're gay? How did I know that I was gay? According to the Lesbian Master Doc, if you're questioning if you're a lesbian, it's way more important to ask yourself if you can be truthfully happy with a man than if you're attracted to them. You can be attracted to men or not know if you are because of compulsory heterosexuality. And it doesn't mean you want to be with them. Attraction is supposed to feel good. One more time for those in the back. Attraction is supposed to feel good good. A key shift for me in my understanding of attraction was recognizing that there was a difference in experiencing desire myself and enjoying the feeling of being desired. When I finally put that shift into language in my head, it was like a light bulb moment. Like everything became clear. I realized that what I felt in my relationships with men or in my experiences with men wasn't desire. It wasn't sexual attraction. It was the positive affirmation of being desired by a man, which is something that as a woman, as someone who's socially raised as a woman, I've been taught is like my number one value. My number one determinant of my worth is how attractive I am to men. So when men would find me attractive, when men would want to date me, when men would flirt with me, I genuinely enjoyed the experience because I got validation. I enjoyed that feeling of being desired and I mistook that for experiencing desire myself. And then once I actually started experiencing my own desire, I was like, what? <laughs> what is this feeling inside of me? <laughs> oh my goodness, I cannot talk this much for every single sentence I read here or we're gonna be here for an hour. Okay, here are two big ones. If you're listening to all these things that I'm saying, or if you're questioning yourself, you're questioning your attraction to men and you find yourself saying, but I like fictional men, I like male celebrities. Feeling attraction to male celebrities and male fictional characters is not necessarily a sign that you're not gay because those celebrities or characters, first of all, aren't real. Second of all, are quite possibly written by women. <laughs> And third, they're completely unattainable. It's possible you're allowing yourself to feel this attraction because you're never actually gonna make contact with them in the real world, right? Straight women can have girl crushes and straight men can have man crushes without anyone telling them that they can't be slash aren't straight anymore. So the reverse shouldn't be applied to lesbians. The other thing I wanna to touch on is aesthetic attraction. This was another idea that blew my mind. You can be attracted to somebody in the way that you find them aesthetically pleasing and you like looking at them, you like listening to them talk, whatever it is. But that doesn't mean that you want to bang them. It doesn't mean that you want to date them. It doesn't mean that you want to be with them. And maybe it does. And maybe it does. Even if that's the case, doesn't mean you're not gay. I know, I know, it's complicated. Maybe that's a hot take. Another big one, and I fall into this category, but I think I've liked men before. You can identify as a lesbian if you've liked men in the past, but no longer are attracted to men or wanna pursue relationships with them. Lots of lesbians have dated or had genuine relationships with men before realizing they were lesbians. Doesn't make them any less of a lesbian. Before we get into the signs of compet, the really like, do these apply to you? You might be gay. <laughs> Section, I wanna say one, that this document does really focus on like defining who can and can't call themselves a lesbian. I'm not in that camp. I'm not here to gatekeep your identity. If you feel like you're a lesbian, like then you can be a lesbian. And also recognize that this document 
really uses like the binary genders, but you can swap out the idea of women with just like not men. And that makes this a bit more inclusive to various forms of queer attraction, right? It now takes us through section after section of like, does this apply to you type situations. So I'm going to read through a few of them. And if any of this resonates with you, I would really recommend checking out the document for yourself because I'm not going to go through all of it. Go read it for yourself. It might change your life. Attraction to men. So do any of these apply to you? Deciding which guys to be attracted to, not to date, but to be attracted to based on how well they match a mental list of attractive qualities. You have a list of impossible criteria in your head that a man must meet for you to be attracted to him. And if you ever meet someone who does match all the criteria, you just add more impossible standards on. This one never really applied to me. I kind of went the opposite direction because I thought that feeling like a man was desiring me was me feeling desire, which meant I thought I was attracted to so many people. Like I misunderstood friendship and like enjoying being around somebody as attraction. I misunderstood somebody flirting with me as me being attracted to them. I thought I was attracted to everybody. <laughs> ridiculous. Oh, here, you get crushes on just about every guy you're friendly with because there's really no difference between friendships and crushes to you. That was me hard. I really did not understand the difference between friendship and romantic feelings. And then any romantic feelings that I had toward female friends, I thought was like, just a sign of like, this is what female friendship is like. Like, oh, it's just different because we're both women. So like, we understand each other and it's just like magic because it's magic and all female friendships are like this. <laughs> I'm not gay, definitely not me. All of my fantasies around men are always with faceless, nameless men. The more realistic the fantasy and the more details about my partner I invent, the less excited and into the fantasy I become. You lose all attraction or get extremely uncomfortable if there are any implications that they might like you back. This just falls into my category of I thought I was a bad person. I would have these crushes on guys and I would actively pursue these crushes. It's hard to explain unless you've been there because I wasn't, <laughs> like, <laughs> I wanna say I wasn't faking it, but like I was faking it. I just didn't even realize because I thought that that's what it, Felt like I didn't know any better. I didn't know relationships could feel differently. So I just thought that there was something wrong with me in that I would have these crushes, crushes, I would pursue them. And then as soon as they liked me back, I would lose all interest. And I was like, what's wrong with me? Why am I a bad person? You mistake the desire for male approval as attraction. You don't necessarily want a relationship with men, but you want men to want a relationship with you. Reading a desire to be attractive to men as attraction to them. <laughs> and finally in this section, you wish you weren't attracted to men slash you wish you were a lesbian. I always wanted to be gay. I wouldn't verbalize that to anyone. I wouldn't dare write it down or anything like that. But during the years that I thought I was bi, I wished that I would have been just gay. Like not saying that bi women aren't queer or their attraction to women or their queerness isn't just as valid as a, as a gay woman's or a lesbian's. But what I mean by that is I was in a long-term relationship with a man and I thought, Oh, like if I were just gay, then I would be in a relationship with a woman right now, which is what I really wanted. If only I, I had just been gay this whole time, you know, like maybe my path would be with a woman, which is what I really wanted. Turns out that was a big sign that I was actually just gay. Oops, we did our best. We did the best we could. Relationships with men the next section. Again, do any of these apply to you? I like the idea of being with a man, but anytime a man makes a move on me, I get incredibly uncomfortable. I do not like the reality of men, only the idea of being with men. Dreading what feels like an inevitable domestic future with a man. Oh, did I fight tooth and nail against anything that I, that I read as domestic. Cooking, 
cleaning, house plants, getting married, a wedding, anything that I saw as traditional domesticity, I was like, I hate it. It's not for me. I just hate it. That's just who I am. I hate it. That was my small way internally and like my small way of in my own life, like f fighting back. That was the little way that my that my brain allowed me to protest compet even while I was living it. You have every reason to be happy in your relationship with a man, but you just aren't slash everything is going really well, but something is missing and you can't figure out what. Oh, that's a message I get from you guys a lot too. I'm in this relationship. He's perfect. On paper, our relationship is perfect, but something just feels like it's missing and I can't figure out what or why. I should be happy. Everything is perfect. I found such a great guy. Why can't this be enough for me? Why can't I be happy? Being in a relationship with a man and realizing that you're gay is no fault of anybody. It's not saying that your relationship isn't or wasn't a beautiful thing. It's not saying that either of you aren't wonderful people. It's not saying that you haven't built something beautiful together. It's just saying that you've realized something about yourself, that you've realized something about who you are and what you want and what you deserve. And you deserve to be in a relationship that fulfills you that fulfills all those parts of you. God, and I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I do. <laughs> I did it. I was there. You cannot live your whole life suppressing something like this. You just can't. You owe yourself so much more. You owe him so much more. You know, being repulsed by the dynamics of most slash all real life male female relationships you've seen and or regularly feeling like maybe it works for them, but I never want my relationship to be like that. Whoo, I was bad for that one too. I would see pff, literally any relationship. I would be like, I don't know how they do that. I don't want that. I don't like that. I can't believe they do this like that. Going along with escalation because it seems like the appropriate time or because the guy wants it so bad, even if you personally aren't quite ready to say I love you or have labels or move in together, etc. I pushed my own engagement. Getting engaged was my idea. I decided, well, you know, it's been this long. This is what we should be doing. My whole life I had said I never wanted to get married. <laughs> my whole life. Because the thought of getting married like made me feel icky. I never wanted it. And everybody knew that. And my partner knew that. So when I came to him and I was like, hey, we should get married. Like everyone was kind of like, what? <laughs> I just thought like, this is what we're supposed to do now. So let's do it. When that became a reality and we were supposed to actually start planning this thing and put the steps in place to make it happen, it was absolute panic. Absolute panic. That was um, an area where I couldn't hide it anymore. I couldn't not look at the truth of what was going on. That uh, I am a homosexual. Thinking you're really in love with a guy, but being able to get over him in such record time that you pretend to be more affected than you are so your friends don't think you're heartless. Me. Me with every relationship I ever had. I did not understand heartbreak until I started dating queer people and having relationships within my actual sexual orientation. And then finally in this section, worrying that you're broken inside and unable to really love anyone. Oh my God, me, I thought I was broken. But I was not, I was not broken. Just a comp head girl. Living in a comp hit world. There's a whole section here on sex and intimacy with men. I've talked a lot about these points in other videos. A few quickly to give you a taste. Having sex not out of the desire for physical pleasure or emotional closeness, but because you feel like feeling wanted. Your fantasies about men still somehow turn out to be a little gay. Being bored with sex with men slash not understanding what the big deal is that makes other women want it. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot to unpack around sex. Early interest in women. Let's see how many of these apply to us. They're gays. <laughs> Not recognizing past slash current crushes on women until you've come to grips with your attraction to women. Check. 
Being unusually competitive, shy, or eager to impress specific women when you're not that way with anyone else. Check. Wanting to kiss your female best friend on the mouth for literally any reason. To practice for the boys included. Check. Getting butterflies or feeling like you can't get close enough when cuddling with a close female friend. Check. Looking at a close female friend and feeling something in your chest clench up and being overwhelmed with love for her. Love you may read as platonic. Check. Having had an unusually close relationship with a female friend growing up that was different and special in a way you couldn't articulate. Check. Hey Kate, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> Having your favorite character in every show be that one gay-coded or butch-looking woman. Absolutely. Feeling weirdly guilty and uncomfortable in locker rooms, etc. when your female friends are less clothed than they normally would be around men and being more careful not to look more than they are. Check. Okay, I don't know if I got to this section last time because I don't recognize it, but this one's called The Straight Version of You. Did I read this last time? Feels revolutionary all over again. Thinking that all straight girls feel at least some attraction to women. Check absolutely 100%. I literally thought that all girls were attracted to girls. I thought that everybody felt the same way that I felt and we just didn't talk about it. Or like it, this was just something that we all understood and it just went unspoken. No, Elena, you're just gay. Thinking it's objective and uncontested that almost all women are way more attractive than most men. But it is kind of objective and uncontested. Is it not? I still feel that way. I still stand behind that. Being a really intense LGBT plus ally and getting weirdly emotional about homophobia, but assuming you're just a really good ally and very empathetic. Check and check. I would cry about gay rights and then be like, but, but not me though. I just think it's a really important social issue. <laughs> Exploring attraction to women. Only feeling slash expressing attraction to or sexual interest in women when you're inebriated or otherwise impaired. God, this is a whole other video too, but like my relationship with alcohol has changed so much since I realized I was gay and came out. I used to use alcohol as a way to express my queerness because I didn't know queer people growing up. I didn't know gay women growing up. So the only chance that I got to interact with that community outside of YouTube and the internet was when I would go out drinking. Because if we would go out drinking, sometimes I could get my friends to come with me to the gay bar. So alcohol was really closely tied with my ability to like have queerness in my life. Same thing after I moved out here to BC. The times when I got to have queer community in my life were very alcohol focused. Pride or going out dancing or going to events. It's taken me a few years to really look at and start to understand my, my own relationship with alcohol. Just how big a part, like my desire to express my queerness and my desire to find queer community and like create queer relationships, how much of that was centered around alcohol and how my desire for alcohol has changed now that I, I don't need it as a tool anymore. Being mistaken for a couple with one of your girlfriends is exciting for you. And being mistaken for a couple with one of your guy friends elicits no reaction or feels weird or wrong. I think I said this in the last one, but I loved it when people would mistake me and any of my female friends as a couple. Oh, I lived for that shit. The next section is called Considering Lesbianism. I want to make a shirt that says Consider Lesbianism. <laughs> Wanting to be a lesbian, but feeling like if you don't already know you are one, you can't be. Worrying that because you can't be 100% sure you're not attracted to men and can't be 100% sure you won't change your mind, you can't be a lesbian. Incorrect. It's like this document said, at the beginning, identity can be a now feeling. If you feel like you might be gay, there's nothing wrong with trying that identity on, seeing how it feels. Absolutely nothing wrong with it and absolutely nothing wrong with changing your mind later on if that ends up happening. Like you can't not explore something now because you're afraid of changing your mind later. You're changing your mind right now. You're doing it preemptively. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that 
to all the potential gays that might want to date you. <laughs> and then at the end of the document, there's a whole section on attraction versus comp het. So like ways to know if what you're feeling is actual attraction or if maybe it's compulsory heterosexuality. That could be helpful to read too. In conclusion, you might be gay. I don't know. All that I do know is that trying to figure out what style of relationship, what life path is going to bring you the most joy, is going to be the most fulfilling, is a completely worthwhile endeavor. You are allowed to want a relationship, to want to have experiences that align with who you really are. You are allowed to want that. You are allowed to pursue that. You are allowed to explore that. If no one's told you yet, or if you haven't heard me tell you in a while, you can be gay if you want to. I wanted to for years and I tried to convince myself I didn't. I tried to talk myself out of it. I tried to suppress it, but I, I could only manage it for so long. And now here we are and life is more beautiful than I could have ever imagined for myself. I feel like I'm a whole person. I feel like I am experiencing the full range of what life has to offer, or I'm in the process of discovering the full range of what life has to offer. I no longer feel muted. I no longer feel broken like there's something wrong with me. I no longer feel like there's this little voice in the back of my head trying to convince me that I'm happy, trying to convince me that this is the life that I want and that this is the life that I'm choosing. I just feel it now. I just know it now. And it is challenging and it is scary and it is painful at times, but it is so, so worth it. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to see more of my face, you can go follow me on Instagram. That's where the magic happens. This document will also be linked in the description. My Patreon will be linked in the description where you can get your name in the VIP credits. My vitally important producers. Another huge thank you to Love Honey for partnering with me on this video. Remember, you can use my code Elena20 to get 20% off site-wide, including 20% off the Womanizer OG. Be sure to check out that link in my description and all of the Black Friday deals currently going on at Love Honey. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I love you very much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Just a little education piece here. We used to think that the G-spot was literally like a spot inside the vagina. We now know it's actually just a large area of the inner that's covered by the front vaginal wall, which makes it less sensitive than the external and opens up opportunity for all sorts of sensation.